Hello and welcome to another edition of Moments with Mind Leaps. Uh, thank you so much for joining us again on these Friday sessions where we get to do my favorite part of my job, which is have interesting conversations with researchers, dancers, and creatives around the world who are making a change in their community. And my name is Rebecca Davis and I'm the founder and executive director of Mind Leaps. And I'm really excited today to be joined with Caitlin Cassett. And Caitlin and I go way, way back, um, but Caitlin has gone on to build a really interesting career in dance, graduating from University of South Florida, and then joining Ariel Riefka Dance in New York, and then also traveling to multiple countries with Mind Leaps as one of our lead international trainers. So it's been a long journey with this young dancer to see her all the, all the way around the world, um, and now growing her career in New York, and sharing with us really interesting a really interesting stories and experience how she's this exciting journey. So I'm so happy for you to be joined today by Caitlin Casson, who is connecting with us now. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Rebecca. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. You look like you're in a beautiful garden, which is not fair during COVID. <laughs> this would be my tree. His name is Bruce. He sits in our apartment. Are you kidding me? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, off to that. We're already off topic, which is often the case between Caitlin and I. Caitlin, I was just sharing with our guests um, how interesting it's been to see you go from a young ballet student to University of South Florida, Ariel Riefka, traveling around the world. So thank you for being with us and sharing with us a little bit more about how all of this came to be. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Excited to <laughs> chat with you. Well, I have lots of memories of doing lots of painful things in ballet class with you in the studio, but I'm not sure if that's really your strongest memory or connection to dance. Though I know 64, from... <laughs> 64 is now famous around the world. <laughs> um, maybe it'll go into the mind of curriculum next. <laughs> um, but I know, Caitlin, the dance has really been something that's pulled you into like a very focused um, path in life at a very early age. Share with us a little bit about what dance or the arts has meant for you, either in your early life or now, or as you look to our exciting, confusing futures. <laughs> yeah, I um, I think I've just been really lucky. Honestly, I um, started dancing when I was really young, and I had a teacher who kind of took me under her wing and she brought me to this Russian ballet program in Philadelphia when I was nine. And I had such an amazing summer and they put me on point shoes and I was like training with some of the, um, I was training with trainers from the Bolshoi and uh, I just fell really in love with um, being in a focused environment. And I appreciated that it felt like I was working towards something. I wasn't just like dancing in the studio or around the corner for fun and doing like all different types of dances. There's nothing wrong with either. Um, but I, I needed that focused energy. And um, I have a, my mother especially is like a very supportive of my dancing life and would drive me like hours and hours to different <laughs> dance classes for a lot of my lifetime. So, um, yeah, I think I just kind of like luckily fell into this wonderful trap. And then, um, you know, I went through a, a year of my life that I was dealing with some knee injuries and was, I was struggling a little bit physically and my body was hurting and it was hard to, to dance. And I needed something a little bit outside of the classical world. And I will never like forget this moment, but we, my mom and I had always gone to this one particular studio just outside of Philly for point shoes and different dance gear. And we went there and there was this like beautiful, um, photo of a dancer doing contemporary ballet and I was like we were talking to the studio or the um, shop owner because we've become friendly with her over the years and I was just saying like I need something that's not tutus anymore like I need something that's different <laughs> and then this picture was sitting there and I was like I need to do something like this and my mom literally just took this picture which of course was to you to your studio and um, this is a picture of Antigone and um, she was like, okay, I'm going to call this woman and we're going to see where we go from here then because you need to be dancing, but you clearly can't be doing what you're doing right now. So, 
that's uh, how we got to you. <laughs> Taylor, I love, I love it that you need to be doing what you're doing, but not that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I needed to be dancing. I needed to be focused, but I needed something that was more free. I'd gotten to that point where, you know, I'm someone who like, I'm very independent and I'm an only child and I like to like make my own choices as, as you know, well, and the studio was not, you know, allowing me to do that anymore inside of like classical ballet. I just needed something that was different. And luckily you provided the perfect balance of both worlds for me. <laughs> oh, Caitlin, what I think you say about like focused energy is so interesting and so important. And like a lot of the dancers that we know have been talking about it now during COVID and as the world gets increasingly confusing all the time, but this idea that you know, you have your passion for something, but when you come into these safe spaces, these dance spaces, these performance spaces, it really allows you to kind of like narrow in on that one thing. And that idea, I think, again, is like the, the focused energy, but also what you said is like knowing that you're working towards something. It's not just repetition for repetition, but it builds and each day changes towards that goal. I think those ideas are something that have certainly helped me. And I think something that we've infused to the mind moves work together and, and really kind of like articulates like the, the mental side of, of it beyond just, as you say, the tutus. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I actually think that's like one of the things I'm struggling with most right now is because I feel like, you know, I've got all this time. I've never had time ever in my life before. Like since I was nine years old, I, I stopped having time then. And so I've got all this time now. I'm like, what do I do with this time? And I am learning to not be afraid of it because there's a lot that can be discovered in this. And there's a lot of sides of my creativity that I haven't accessed in a long time um, mm. that I have, I have the space to do now. And I think long-term that can be beneficial. Um, but yeah, there, there is something interesting about that focused energy that like, I always like to be someone who's working toward a goal and that's how I've lived most of my life. And now I'm like living this other side that is, essentially like not really working toward anything just like working inside of space and I'm not used to that so that's uncomfortable for me but I'm learning to hopefully grow inside of it um but I think that especially kids who are growing up from a, a young age inside of an artistic world that's like a an interesting balance to play with like yes how can we stay focused and work on track but how can we also give ourselves space and not be afraid of that space and that time to just play and explore and create freely you know i think like also kind of what you say is you know understanding this focused energy understanding kind of the need for that that at least both you and i have <laughs> <laughs> and then seeing how you've also used that in this growing growing yoga practice i get these incredible emails from you every week <laughs> I, I wonder how you can kind of connect some of the pieces of your professional experience for us, going mm -hmm. from training as a dancer, joining dance companies like Ariel Rifka, but now also building this yoga practice that really you, you from what I've seen, you really intentionally use this idea, again, about how we focus our, our minds and the connection with our bodies. Yeah, so yoga is like this thing that came into my life. Uh, again, you know, I'm this planner, right? And I like to know what I'm doing and I like to set goals and then I like to achieve those goals. And <laughs> yoga came into my life so haphazardly in college. I had no intentions of being a yoga teacher. And I, it was like, it was the first time in my life that an opportunity came to me that I hadn't planned. And then I followed that. And I'd never done that before. Like usually I mm -hmm. sought things out and I followed the things that I looked for. And this is the mm -hmm. first thing I hadn't planned pump came to me. And then I also decided to follow it. And it has been this like wonderful learning experience and journey. And what I love so much about yoga is that, as, I mean, as you know, well, like dance has a time limit in many ways, mm -hmm. physically, um, you know, age wise, and also like in an audition, you don't know the step, you don't know the combination. Okay, you're cut, like, you've got 10 <laughs> seconds to figure it out. So and in yoga, you don't have to do that. Like in yoga, you can work on a pose for 10 years. And if you don't get it, it's fine. It comes to you at some point. And actually, this is now 10 years of me teaching yoga. And I'm like, oh, wow. yeah, I'm uncovering yes. things in my body and in my capacity mm -hmm. mentally and energetically that I've never understood before. And so that's so interesting to me. And like, again, it brings back this like idea of time that all of a sudden I have time 
and space to like sit and try these things and play and and they're coming to me in a way that I've like forced and pushed before and, and it had never happened. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm really thinking a lot lately about this balance between like staying focused, staying on track, setting goals and achieving them, but then also like not being afraid of space and time and like this um, really special world of like exploring the things that you enjoy doing and what can actually come to you in those moments. It's so interesting how like the, the dancer's mind has really shifted in different ways and really been pushed, I think, during, during this particular year. And I know that it's also been pushed in your particular career when we've thrown you <laughs> into very different environments all the way around the world multiple times. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know Caitlin, um, Caitlin and I get to work together closely a lot in the field for my niece. Uh, she's our lead international trainer. And we've been together in Bosnia and Herzegovina and Guinea and Rwanda. I think, Caitlin, I've lost track of how many trips to Rwanda, but I yeah, know. Many times to Rwanda. <laughs> many. I wonder if you can share with us a couple of those memories or moments that have stuck with you and maybe also kind of how you connect it to this version of, of thinking about time and space now. Yeah, so... Um... There's so many memories that I could talk about. And truly what's so special about Mind Leaps in particular is that every country that we work in and even every group of teachers and students that we work with are very unique and very special yeah. in their own way. However, there is still this like theme of Mind Leaps across it all. And there is this like energy that you can experience from everybody in the different places, but in the same way. And that is so interesting to me that, you know, you can be in all of these different countries and although everybody's different, the like passion and the excitement and the drive to be in this space together is all very much the same across the board. Um, and that's always been so interesting to me. Um, but yeah, of course, like one of my like most special memories about Mind Leaps is in particular the first year that I participated in the Ubumunu Arts Festival in Rwanda in Kigali. Mm -hmm. And um, I traveled there with two other friends and choreographers and, and incredible dancers. And we choreographed a piece on a set of Mind Leaps students. We had 16 kids that we were working with, four girls um, and 12 boys. And we worked so intensely for like three weeks and Rebecca always sets us up with these crazy schedules. And so we were just jam packed and these kids came in every single day. We would get there at like nine or 10 AM. And of course they're there early, <laughs> like before we were there, they're like always there early and like doing stuff. And, um, we would work and we would rehearse all day long um, mm -hmm. until five or 6 p.m. at night and uh, very little breaks. Like, yeah, we would we would rest sometimes and we would come back, but little breaks because we had a lot to do in a short period of time. And so for probably two and a half weeks, we were working this way. And then finally, um, you know, we got to, to the stage and and um, we brought these kids into their first like dress rehearsal experience. And that was just so cool. And then uh, the night of the first night of the performance, they were on stage and we started like in the back of the theater. And then um, by the time that the performance had ended or their piece had ended, we um, walked over to the side of the stage and all of these guys just ran off of the stage and they gave, these, gave us these big hugs and they were like, we did it, we did it. We're so proud of ourselves. And it was the coolest thing, like not only to hear them saying that, but to see them so proud of themselves, to know that like, of course they can do this. We believe in them. They just have not been given an opportunity to achieve something like this before. And, um, and that's just it, right? Like you just need the opportunity. So much, of, so, so many of us are capable of so much more than we believe in, in our own selves. And, and that's it, right? Like that's why we surround ourselves with people who believe in us because, you know, the, we see in others greater than we can see in ourselves. And it was just so cool to like know that these kids could do it. And then they came off stage and then they, they knew that they could do it too. And it's like, <laughs> it, yeah, maybe it sounds stupid, right? To some people like, oh, a dance performance, but it's hard like to study all of this material, to learn how to do the choreography, to remember the counts, to do it with music, to do it with the people around you, to not fight with the people around you, to do it on this stage in front of like, 
what, thousands of people probably were in this like outdoor performance space. And then they did all of that and they came off stage and they were just so proud of themselves. And it was so cool because I'm like, you know what? That's it. Like, this is why we do this work and this is why it's essential. And well, basically more people should be doing dance and other arts, but. <laughs> I think yeah. like the way you articulate the experience um, that the Miley Cyrus had with Ugumunu in your year and multiple years. I mean, you've you've had the the, the opportunity to do it twice for Miley, yeah. and that that's like that critical moment that you described so beautifully. Like it's all of this work behind the scenes and the ups and the downs, and this rehearsal didn't go well, and like all of that is like the the journey, right? So Tracy Voigt was talking last week about like let's love the journey right? Because really, that's when you're building all of the skills that you'll use on stage, but you'll also use in life. And then it's articulated, or it's remembered, or it becomes that like poignant memory when it's the, the performance. But the performance is three minutes of what's a three week, three month, three year, 30 year journey. And, and really, the, the power of the arts is how easily it can be summarized in that three minute performance, um, to, to kind of share it uh, with others. And I think what's been powerful to, to see with the kids that you've worked with is how much it's deeply connected them to you and to each other, like years and years later. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's so few things that can do that for us in the world and dance. We're so fortunate as one of them. I love that you said that. I love that Tracy was talking about that as well. And, and probably, especially in dance, that is a huge piece of what we talk about is like this journey, because that it's exactly as you said, like, yeah, we might live for the performances. They're the most fun. They're the most exciting. It's the most um, interactive way to display your story and all of this hard work you've done. But the process is the journey of getting to that point. And actually, I'm unfortunately, it's not behind me, but I have this painting that my um, dad's friend like made for me when I was a kid of when I was in my tutu years. Um, I had <laughs> this picture of me in a, it was in Giselle, which is my like most hated ballet but um I was in in the ballet and, and I was in this arabesque in this yellow dress which is one of my like favorite colors and so um this woman painted this picture of me and it's me in the yellow dress but I'm on a road and there's um this long mm. road behind me and there's all nice. of these trees around and then these mountains and anyway my dad calls it the journey and he's yeah. like it's this beautiful thing for me about it and so in my family we talk yeah. often about like this process of a journey and like how life is a journey and a career is a journey and each relationship is a journey. And it's interesting to see like the ebb and the flow and the more that you um, stay inside of an experience, whatever it is, uh, the more you have to, you have to go with it like this. Otherwise you're going to have to jump ship because nothing <laughs> is like clear, even path. <laughs> It's so true, like, you know, the ebb and the flow when, like, we stand here and reflect on our journeys, we're like, yeah, it's so beautiful. But, like, at the moment that you're, like, dipping down, it totally doesn't feel like that. But oh, it's right. good to reminded about it when we have this distance. <laughs> oh, yeah. And now, I'm sure, and I, like, I feel this, too. Like, you know, now is probably a dip down for a lot of us, especially in the sure. arts with our work completely closed off and, like, no sight of it coming back soon. So we do have yeah. to remember, especially now, that, like, yeah, this is just, like, a moment down and we're going to pick back up and it's going to be beautiful and it's going to be even better than it was before because we haven't had it in so long, you know? Yeah, and we'll appreciate it. I, I have to tell you, Caitlin, all of the Guinea girls are joining, so I would be remiss to not say hello to them. And I know. I, Deanna's, Deanna's recently Deanna. in the... Yeah, Deanna. Mm -hmm. Deanna's voting you for president in case you were not aware of that already. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, I actually talked to Toshia on the phone this week, which was so oh, special. <laughs> I mean, call Toshia after this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, okay. So we've talked about these things. We've touched on a little bit of the ideas of COVID. I mean, Caitlin, what's the next step in this amorphous journey that you're on at this particular moment in time? What's keeping you going? What's keeping that bright smile that we love so much about you shining on the screen right now? Well, um, you know, I'm truly just trying to take things day by day, but I do have some, I'm, I'm really ultimately very grateful to be um, a part of organizations like Mind Leads and Arrow mm -hmm. Earth Dance and some of the yoga um, relationships I'm involved in that are 
uh, looking for opportunities, even though so much of our like surface level major work is closed down right now. Um, I'm very grateful to be in the arts in this time because we are creative thinkers and we are going to find a way to make things happening. Even if it feels like nothing is, is happening, like we're going to find a way to, to make, um, work and to find creation inside of this. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of experiences like that. And yeah, we'll see. I mean, hopefully uh, Mind Leap's work will uh, continue as, as our programs are reopening and, um, you know, as we're training more trainers and dance work is going to continue. And yeah, we're just going to like ride that uphill battle. <laughs> Well, your students, Emmanuel, Olivia, are waving to you. I think that that's, that's a, a wave that you should come back to their countries first. But Guinea and Rwanda will certainly fight over you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Guinea and Rwanda. Oh, so special. <laughs> uh, and there's multiple requests right now that you post this beautiful photo of your journey. Uh, so oh, please share it with us I and will. then we'll add it to, to this post as well. Caitlin, like one thing that's been so wonderful for me to, to have the chance to, to spend time with you in so many different environments and now work together and learn from you is that I really see kind of how you always bring this energy and this positive spirit into like whatever the challenging <laughs> task might be that lies ahead of us. And then I wonder, like, what, what would you say or what would you summarize about kind of that, that approach that you take to help young dancers today, young artists today who are looking at this journey or lack of journey ahead of them and trying to figure out how do they build a career? How do they go forward? And, and you've done such an interesting job of it as still a very young artist yourself. I wonder if there's some words of advice that you might share with these ones who are, are, are next in line. Yeah, I have, I have two thoughts on this. Um, first will just be words by my dad that I consider every day and he always tells me that ultimately hard work is it. You know, there are people who are really good at a lot of things, but if you don't know how to work hard and you don't know how to put in the effort, you're not gonna move forward. Um, and so he talks to me a lot about that. And so I work very hard and I try to continue working hard. And I see that in Mind Leaps, every country and every kid that is in these programs like I that is it that's like the core of my beliefs is hard work and that grit um, <laughs> so I think hard work especially is like don't worry if you know you don't think you're the best dancer in the room if you don't think your leg is as high as everybody else is if you don't think you're you know spiritually advanced as spiritually as advanced as the people around you just keep working and keep focused and like stay on this path and, um, you know, don't let yourself bob out to the other people around you in that way. Like, really stay true to what you're doing. Stay focused, and the opportunities are going to start coming in. Um, and then additionally, uh, he tells me that it's, you know, you want opportunities that make you a little bit fearful. Not that mm -hmm. it's so fearful to the point where, like, anxiety would take you over and you, you would retreat. You wouldn't be able to do it. But you want opportunities that make you a little bit scared so that you stay on your toes and you stay ready and you stay, like, in that most peak okay. point. Um, and I love that. I think about that a lot, especially, like, as, you know, in real life, like, when time is of the essence and we don't have a lot of time, it's like, okay, you know, we've got five opportunities here. I can do three things time-wise. Which ones mm -hmm. challenge me? Which ones make me just like a little bit afraid that I know I'm going to be pushed to this next level? Um, and so I think those two thoughts, both given to me by my dad, I, I think about on the daily and also especially when considering what's next in life. And also I would say, you know, like, um, kudos to you, Rebecca, and to all of our Mind Leaps team, because those are two things that I see so often in our Mind Leaps programs and in our kids. They're like, yeah, like they're choosing opportunities that are scary every single day. They have to make hard choices every single day and they do it. And in my eye, you know, I'm not always speaking the same language or really know what's going on on the ground, but like in my eye, they're doing it um, really full heartedly and with courage and, and, um, challenge. And so that's so inspiring to me. I think about them every day too. 
this is the second time that you've brought up opportunities and i think like kind of this idea with the earlier that idea is really interesting when you talked about you know sometimes you have an opportunity that you kind of see or you want and you go after and other times like your yoga journey the opportunity kind of just pops in and you decide even though it wasn't my plan i go with it and i think that you know with that mindset of hard work and focused energy and and seeing a clear journey that both those things help us go forward. Opportunities come and opportunities are presented. Uh, and I'm not at all surprised when I hear you, but especially your dad's thinking there, <laughs> that, you've, that you've excelled so quickly at such a young age, Caitlin. It's just really uh, a great story that my niece loves to tell, but I'm also so fortunate to see you continue to grow every time that we have the opportunity to work with you. <laughs> Well, Mind Leaps pushes me and um, gives me space to grow. So I'm very grateful for this organization. So I think what that means is that now that you've, you've, uh, you've said to me live on Instagram that you're okay to be a little bit fearful, that means I can throw you anywhere in the world to the next Mind Leaps program. I'm ready. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, Caitlin, thank you so much for spending time with us today. And I really appreciate all the things that you share with me and our kids and and also your journey with with your community thank you for all that you do thank you rebecca <laughs> okay we'll be in touch thanks everyone for joining us bye everybody have a good day bye, -bye.